The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorn was a mild-mannered graphic artist until he was bitten by the electronics bug. Now, every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In today's episode, we're going to continue work on the dog treat dispenser. Last week, we built the mechanical dispenser itself. This week, we'll get it working with the Raspberry Pi so we can eventually control it over the internet. Let's get started. But first, the news. Today in Ben News, I have a confession to make. Uh, I was watching this funny YouTube video about a Mr. T approved cooking device and uh, I thought, you know what, that looks pretty good, so I think I'll buy one, so I actually did. See Mr. T and his Flavor Wave oven, he pities the fool that does not cook with this. But you know what? It's not actually that bad. It just blows air, hot air around your food and it cooks it. What I like is you can just throw something in there like a hamburger, push the button and it cooks, you don't have to flip it or even watch it. So far from the worst as seen on TV device that I've ever bought. Not bad. So we need to hook some hardware up to the Raspberry Pi to make it work with the dog treat dispenser. First, we're gonna have a flasher. That's just some sort of light that'll blink so you can get the dog's attention and also the dog will associate the light with the food, hopefully. So we're just gonna use a bright LED for that. However, we can't drive that directly with the Raspberry Pi's GPIO. So we're gonna use a TIP-102 Darlington transistor. A Darlington transistor is a pair of transistors that give you a high gain. So here's how it works. It's open collector, which means we have five volts here. Goes into our load, which in this case is our LED light. Goes to the collector. And the Pi pulses uh, the base. It you know turns on the transistor, allowing the collector to go through the emitter. Therefore, current goes through the LED and lights it up. The next thing we need is a servo. That's the thing that rotates the disk. All we really need to do for that is to find a servo library for the Raspberry Pi. I'm sure someone's written one and we'll find it. Finally, there's an IR tab sensor and that was that thing which sees if the tab is you know, made a revolution or not. That just outputs a zero or a one. So we can attach that to the general input output on the Pi safely. Also, we wanna add an additional five volt line. We don't wanna be powering the servo or the flasher off the Pi's five volt power supply. <laughs> So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make an adapter so we can hook up these wires from the servo and the IR to this Raspberry Pi. Good. Here is the breakout board that I made and it plugs right into the Raspberry Pi as so. It has the wiring on it as well as the tip 102. So we need an external power here, external five volts because we don't wanna run the servo off this thing's power and attach our flasher here using a pinball flasher. Our IR sensor goes here and our servo goes here. There we go. Now we can actually work on controlling this with the Raspberry Pi. So now I'm going to port the code I wrote for Arduino to Python and I'll program it on the Raspberry Pi. Have you heard about Element 14 TV, the new online TV channel for engineers? At Element 14 TV, you'll find videos from some of the hottest names in engineering. Not only will you find episodes of my show, but also videos by Jerry Ellsworth, Arduino tutorials by Jeremy Bloom, and much, much more. Element 14 TV features some of the most innovative new products happening in engineering today that just might inspire you to try something new. You can also find the latest videos from the world's leading electronic manufacturers, all in one place. The entire video library is completely free, so join Element 14 today and tune into Element 14 TV, the brand new TV channel for engineers. This is just another way that Element 14 makes it easy for engineers to be inspired and find the solutions they need to get the job done. And now, back to the show. Our Raspberry Pi is now hooked up to this hub to give it more power because like I mentioned, we don't want to run these things off of the Raspberry Pi power itself. We've also got our wireless adapter and of course our keyboard and mouse adapter in there. So I've got the Raspberry Pi open here on my screen. There's two main things I want to show you. We have our Genie program, which is what we use to make our Python file. Python file is just a text file. It's run by an external interpreter, so you don't have to compile it, but it's still useful to write it in a programming environment. We have two programs. We have Flash, and that's the one that's going to flash the light. Then another program called Treat, which is a little bit more complicated, and that's actually going to make it rotate off the treat. So we'll start with the Flash program. I've got it running here, and I go over to my terminal window, and I do uh, super user do Python, which is the language, Flash, which is the program, .py, and it'll run the code. 
There we go. So that's one of the things that we'll do to get the dog's attention, it'll flash. The other command is treat, and that will make it rotate out a treat, hopefully. Let's make a flow chart so you can see what the Python code is actually doing when it dispenses that treat. Here is what the code we just wrote does. You start the code and it looks to see if the IR sensor is tripped. That is the tab that the thing rotates around. If the IR sensor is tripped, means is there a tab in there, it will move the servo disk slowly until it's out of the tab. So it starts to move it out. Once it's clear of the tab, it starts moving the servo faster. I noticed for some reason the bones don't get stuck if you move it fast. When you move it too slow, that's when it has problems, so whatever. Once the IR is tripped again, which basically means once it makes a complete 180 degree turn, then the cycle is complete. So our Python code does this. It's pretty simple. We have some uh, additional code here, like when it stops, it actually goes, brings itself back a little bit, kind of homes itself, but this is basically what it does. Not too complicated a code. Oh, hey, Ben. I'm sure you were able to uh, read that report that we got the memo on over the weekend while we were both working. Yeah, that was one of the best memos I ever read. So it was so interesting. I know, right? We have to do something about this internet blockage. I'm going through withdrawals. I've got the shakes, right? They don't have interventions for that. You just have to deal with it cold turkey. So what are we going to do? All that I have is the cutest month from last year's animal calendar. And it's just it's not enough. I've got that in the wall. No one's seen it yet. The IT guy, though, he sees that off with my head. OK, I've got a guy on the outside. This dog shoot dispenser I've been working on, we're going to put this near a cute animal and then using the internet. We can log into this and feed the cute animal and see it eat. Cute animal videos? Yes. Like the video phones I've been talking about since 82. They're real. Wow. So when is this going to happen? Next week's episode. That is uh, the most interesting memo that I will definitely be writing. And Yeah, the synergy of it was quite remarkable. Yeah. Thanks All for right, the see you later. conference. See you at the water cooler. Yes, definitely. We can talk about Lost. Today's viewer question comes from Gordon who asks, is it possible to build a dip soldering rig for through hole components using a deep fat fryer? Well, I don't think you want to put the solder right in the fryer itself, but you might be able to use its heating element with a separate smaller crucible for the solder. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we'll get the treat dispenser working over the internet and feed a super cute dog with a click of a mouse. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.